Hello, I'm Dan Anderson. I'm in my Armadillo backpack trailer and today I'm going to um, upgrade my circuit breaker from 100 amps to 120 amps. The problem I've been having is my hot water kettle. Um, it uses 950 watts but yet it trips the um, circuit breaker. So um, I looked at the specs of the various components here. First we have the battery. The battery says you could it's a 100 amp hour battery. You could you draw 100 amps at one time with surges of up to 200 watts for a couple seconds. The wire is two gauge wire so it should be able to handle um, 120 amps. The inverter itself specifies you could have a breaker to protect it um, up to 150 um, amps. So we're good to go because this is only 120 amp breaker. So <clears throat> the problem was is that um, Armadillo Trailer installs a 100 amp breaker, you know, for, with their 100 amp battery and 1000 watt inverter, but you need to allow a little bit more fudge factor for surges. Usually it's some like 15-20% um, over um, the amount that it's rated for. So 100 amps should have a um, 120 amp breaker and that would avoid um, tripping, which I'm getting with the um, kettle. So next thing I'm going to do is demo the ke kettle, kettle and show you um, what is happening with the current battery, the 100 amp hour battery and 100 amp breaker. Here's the kettle and I have it plugged up to a meter to show how many watts it's drawing. So let's turn it on and see what happens. It's on. It's drawing, let's see, 950 watts. Let's see how long it lasts. Okay, 932 watts, still going. Okay, you heard that click? That was a, that was the circuit breaker. So if you look down here in the battery box, see the battery and also you see that circuit breaker right there, the trip. So it says reset there. It's hard to see. So I just turn it back on like that. And also Need to turn the inverter on. Wait a few seconds. And there with a the beep, the inverter's back on. So my next project here will be um, replacing the that um, breaker there that we just reset. I installed the 120 amp circuit breaker here. You can see it right there. And what you, after you install the circuit breaker, you reattach the terminals. First, you start with the red terminal, the positive, and start with the thickest gauge wires on the bottom and the thinnest at the top. Make sure all these terminals are flat. You tighten this down. You tighten down the negative side, the black side, and now you can open, close the circuit again. Then we go over, turn on the inverter, press this for a few seconds. 
beeps. The light is on. That's good. Then we look at this. It looks like it looks like it's on. Oh, let's turn. Okay, let's turn the pot on, and let's wait and see what happens here. Nine twenty watts. Nine twenty watts. I hear some boiling. Nine twenty. This right now is about where it would trip. Looks like it's doing. It's it's working. I can now use my hot water kettle on battery only power. Let's see if it boils and then it will turn itself off once it starts to boil. And that will be a success. Nine twenty watts. Light is still on. Nine twenty watts. Ah, uh, it, it stopped, so that means it boiled and it turned itself on and we have genuine boiling water out of the battery and the inverter, so that's success. Well, let's review what I did. I replaced this 100 amp circuit breaker, which protects the two gauge wire from the battery to the inverter. Um, and with this 120 um, amp circuit, which I bought off Amazon, it happens to be Blue Sea Systems. Um, there's lots, lots of them out there. Um, you don't have to buy this specific one, but this seemed like it was high quality, had good readings and it was, it's plug-in compatible. The the locations of the for the wires and the terminals are the, are the same. So I didn't have to dr drill any hole, new holes or anything. I just took out the old fuse and put in a new one. So I needed a S2 bit here. That's a square square bit at the end there. Let's see if you can see that. And I used two, two socket wrenches. Let's see, what are these? This is 14 millimeter, 14 and a 10 millimeter. Uh, the 14 was for the battery terminals and a 10 millimeter was for the uh, circuit breaker terminals. I turned off all the power before I did this. First, I covered the the solar panel. I could have unplugged it. There's a Zamp connector up there to unplug it, but I'd rather not do that. Um, just like leave it alone. So I just covered it with a um, air mattress, which is opaque. I I turned off the inverter. The inverter switch is controlled right there. I turned off the the power. The power. The power. Um, shut off switch, which is by the battery there. Um, and I opened the, the circuit. So, and I um, removed the battery terminals and removed the circuit breaker and I put in a new circuit breaker and I had the circuit open just so there wouldn't be any connection once I hooked up the battery. Then I hooked up the battery um, and I closed this, the circuit breaker here and turned on the inverter again and tested the hot water pot and it boiled water this time. So I would say this is a 
success. And I now could have hot water from um, the battery. Now, usually if I'm camping a long term, several days without power, I would just use propane. But it's kind of nice to have the flexibility. I'd rather, use, if I have enough electricity, I'd rather use that and not empty my tank. Um, so I could, I could do one or other depending on my situation. If I'm out several days and want to be careful with my power, I'll use the propane. If I want to, if I know I have enough power, I, I could just use the hot water kettle, which is very convenient for me. It's really nice for quick, quick um, hot drinks and breakfast and and whatever. A lot more convenient than um, firing up the stove. So I'll leave some links to the, the items here that I bought. The, the only actually the only thing I bought was the the circuit breaker. Um, so that's it. Um, bye.